So, with DICE having released eight new weapons onto the CTE alongside the new Brusilov keep map, I thought it was time that we have a look at each of these weapons and see how they perform compared to the weapons already in the game. I'm going to split them into their own classes and then do one class per video because doing eight individual videos is not only a huge task, but I'm about to go on holiday and uh, I've only got a few days left before I leave and making that many videos in that amount of time is going to be really, really difficult. But it does mean that you get two weapons per video, so I guess it's a win-win. We're going to start with the assault class and that means the double barrel shotgun and the Maxim SMG. Let's go for the shotgun first, or to give it its proper name, the 1900 Double Barrel Shotgun. Two variants will be available for you to unlock, the Factory and the Slug. Fairly self-explanatory, but each of them will offer the holder a very different playstyle choice. The Factory allows you to fire one shell at a time, or you can switch the fire mode, and you can fire both shells at once. Double the pain for the enemy who's sitting in your crosshair. If you choose to go with that option though, you'll obviously need to be very accurate with your shots because you only get one shot before needing to reload. Luckily, the reload is nice and quick overall and DICE has done the honour of adding a single shell reload and a double shell reload as well. Having both barrels ready with a shell if you've got it in single shell fire mode is extremely important if you do want to have a follow-up shot, so having a slightly shorter reload is going to help you out a little bit there. And of course, the two shell reload and the one shell reload are slightly different in their timings, at least from what I can tell from having played with it a little bit in the game. Now, the slug variant is a completely different kettle of fish. The only other slug shotgun variant in the game at the moment is with the Model 10A, which has an optical sight on it, and that makes it easier to line up some of those longer range targets, which is of course the point of using the slug variant in the first place. The 1900 slug doesn't have an optical sight, however. Because it's simply a double barrel shotgun, the opportunity for attachments is extremely limited, and therefore it makes the 1900 slug almost a skill weapon. You're going to need to take lots of care if you want to try and use this thing at long range, and don't get me wrong, you can use it at long range, and you can get some very, very satisfying kills with it. But when the target is moving, that's when it becomes really difficult. You've got to predict where that player is going to be without an optical sight, with the double barrel shotgun taking up half of your screen, and then you've got to fire. See what I mean about this thing being a little bit of a skill weapon? It's going to take some time for you to get comfortable with it. Up close though, the slug is going to guarantee you a kill almost every single time, providing you can keep the player you're aiming at within your crosshairs. With only two slug rounds to play with before you reload, just like the factory variant, you're going to need to be quick on your feet with your reactions and have a solid sidearm behind you, one that you're really comfortable with, to follow up your shots. Now you can switch fire modes on this one, and you can deliver both slug rounds at once if you want to. And definitely at longer range, I'd suggest doing that. Especially if you can't see most of the target and you're aiming at the head, there might be a chance that you can land a long range headshot. Now the second weapon, the Maxim SMG, I've got some opinions on this one already, but to clear something up before we start, the optical sights on the optical variant are completely misaligned, and as a result the weapon is basically broken. So I can't say too much about that variant right now, I will explain how to unlock it later in the video. DICE are completely aware that it doesn't work properly, and they will have it fixed by the time the DLC comes out. The factory variant, or the base variant, whatever it's going to be called, basically the one without the broken optical sights, is very very good at the moment. Both variants come with an 80 round box magazine, which is fed by stripper clips, but the animation just takes out all of the clips and then shoves all of the clips into the box at the same time, so there's no stupidly long reload. But it is still a box magazine, so it's going to take a lot longer than some of the other SMGs in the game. The weapon itself is based off of the MG0815 machine gun that the Sentry uses and the Germans created, but it's squashed down into a much smaller size and it fires 9mm Parabellum rounds, exactly the same as the MP18. It's got a low rate of fire by modern standards, just 550 rounds a minute, 
but that matches and fits right into all the other SMGs in the game, minus the Automatico. And it can reach really, really far if you use it properly. Standing still with the Maxim and firing, not moving around at all, that is what you want to be doing. There is virtually no recoil on it that I can really tell. It's very accurate to where you're pointing and where your bullets go until you start moving and then things get a little bit jumpy. It's almost as if DICE decided to put this mini LMG into the Assault class and then give it support-like characteristics when standing still. It is essentially a light machine gun, but it fits into the SMG category because it uses pistol ammunition instead. It's a very odd weapon, but I really enjoy using it. I will say this, however, and this is where I think the Maxim may need a little bit of tweaking at the moment. With an 80 round magazine, this weapon is on par with the Hell Regal. It even exceeds it, and we know how popular the Hell Regal is. It's still the most popular SMG in Battlefield 1. Nothing else really comes close to it. Now, I doubt that the Maxim will ever be as popular as it's a DLC weapon. Naturally, less people are going to be using it because not as many people own the DLC. But it follows in very similar footprints to the Hell Regal. Middling rate of fire, low recoil, and lots of bullets in a magazine. Because the Hell Regal has essentially cornered the market in the Assault class, is it then necessary to add another weapon with similar characteristics? The beauty here is that no one really knows how the Maxim SMG performed because it was only a prototype, exactly the same as the Hell Regal. DICE has a lot of room here where they can stretch these weapons in any way they really want to. So why would they do what they have done with the Maxim SMG and kind of make it very similar? I'm just not sure if adding a Hell Regal 2.0 is really the right way to go. Now, moving on to how you actually get your hands on these weapons once the DLC comes out. DICE has kindly put that information into the CTE so we can take a look at what we need to do here. Yes, they are locked behind assignments, so for people who don't like the assignments and simply like the weapons being handed to them, well, apologies, DICE doesn't seem to be doing that. They're going down the same route that they did with They Shall Not Pass. Each variant has its own assignment, so for the Assault class, we have four new assignments to complete. First up, the 1900 Shotgun Factory. You need to get 40 kills with the M97 Trench Gun Backboard and kill five players in one round with the rocket gun. These assignments, they are all tracked automatically in the game, and there's no set order that you need to do them in. You just have to get 40 kills in total with the trench gun backboard. That's not just in one round, that's just in total over as many rounds as you like. And then five kills in one round with the rocket gun. The 1900 slug, that's a different assignment. You'll need to land 50 kills with the 12G automatic extended shotgun, and then 20 kills with the Gasser 1870 revolver. The Gasser is the assault specific revolver, so maybe just run the 12G auto and the Gasser as a combo and you can just double up on those kills and get the assignment done nice and quick. As for the Maxim, starting with the factory or the base variant, I'm not 100% sure what it will be named, you'll need to get 15 kills with the MP18 trench against enemies running as the support class. There's an extra layer here. You'll need to focus on support class players more than others, although I wouldn't suggest not shooting enemies just because they aren't support players if they happen to pop up in front of you. A kill is a kill at the end of the day. Oh, and you'll also need to get 10 kills with anti-tank nades as well. The optical variant, the broken one at the moment, you'll need 50 kills with the Automatico Trench and then destroy 5 tanks with anti-tank mines. Those things were the bane of my life for a few days, trying to unlock that Hell Regal defensive variant. Why are you doing this to us, DICE? Why? These aren't the worst assignments, though. These are actually very, very easy. There are some funny assignments coming in this DLC, and I'll explain those in later videos, depending on what class they refer to. But there you go. Two new weapons coming to the Assault class very soon. The 1900 Double Barrel Shotgun and the Maxim SMG. Both very interesting, and in my opinion at the moment, good additions to the game. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think down below in the comments section of these new weapons, and I'll be down there reading as many as I can. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.